The majority of the monkeys here are direct offspring from the original troop. Um, they're relatives in the, um, of the original troop that came over from Japan in 1972, from Arashiyama, Japan. Um, and at that point, the, uh, the troop there in Arashiyama that had been being studied by this uh, Japanese primatologist had split into two groups. And one group had decided to go out down into the suburbs of Kyoto. And when that occurred, they started having altercations with the, with the citizens there, and the government was going to destroy them. So some of the U.S. students who were studying over there hatched a plan to, to try to save them. And it's a long, sordid story, but they ended up in South Texas in Encinal originally, and then they eventually got moved here. And so what we here do here with Born Free is just provide them a, a good quality of life. They're as free as can be. We don't uh, agree with keeping wildlife in captivity. Um, and we try to let them live their lives as normal as possible with us just supplemental feeding them. So the support, is, the, the purpose is to support this, uh, this population here. And then in addition to that, we also take in ex-pet, ex-research, and uh, ex-entertainment animals. Um, and normally they have to be caged up. They cannot be put out in the local population here in free roam. So we build large natural enclosures for them to live their life out. You know, again, as in natural of an environment as possible. But because of their so psychological logically damaged, um, the, it's almost impossible to get them integrated into a normalized troop like this. But you don't want to put them down? You, you want to keep them alive? No, no, there's, there's no sense in doing that. Um, these monkeys can have a good quality of life, um, but I'll, at the same time, room at legitimate sanctuaries are running out. This is a, this is a trade that's been going on for years, um, and now people unfortunately can purchase these monkeys over the internet. Um, the breeders breed these monkeys and steal the babies that, as soon as two days of age from the mothers. And the mothers don't give those babies up willingly. Uh, they're, they're, they're anesthetized or they're beat off and the baby's deliberately stolen. And of course that creates deep psychological trauma to the baby. And what, so, what kind of trauma? What, 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 what do you see happen in a case like that in a baby? Well, generally what happens is that baby ends up growing abnormally psychologically. So they'll start self-biting, self-mutilating. They start engaging in behavior that you never see a normal wild monkey engage in, um, such as attacking owners and so on. And this is the fallacy of, of this, is that people get these monkeys thinking that they're wonderful pets. They see a few stories on the internet. The breeders tell them, oh, what a beautiful monkey this will be. And as long as you get them early, they, they'll be a perfect pet. And it's just not the case. They're truly wild animals. They have very, uh, uh, a large number of, of hardwired instincts that are just part of their being. And one of those is to see how high they can attain rank. And so when they're in a family environment, very early on, they start testing to find out just how high they can climb in the family situation and that, that hierarchy and that structure. And typically that results in people being severely bit. Um, and even if you have the male's canines removed, their incisors, as, as anybody who's been bit by a human child can attest to, it doesn't feel good. It can still be very painful. And in addition, in the home, they're extremely destructive. Tear down the curtains, defecate on the, the countertops. So these people end up having to cage the very little baby that they wanted to make a human surrogate out of. Once that occurs, then the animal starts instinctually knowing they've achieved alpha status. Because as the people try to clean the cage, the monkey tries to attack them to, to defend their space. Um, and as that occurs, the people start reacting instinctively to back away. When the monkey sees that type of behavior, they know the people are afraid of him and he's achieved alpha status. So then, hopefully, they've tried to find a, a, an alternate situation for him that involves another monkey, because that's the problem from the very start, is that these monkeys are raised by themselves, and that never happens in the wild. They're surrounded by their conspecifics. They're surrounded by, you know, by their what? conspecifics or other monkeys. Um, they live in a natal group with their mother and her immediate uh, offspring and her relatives. And so there's always this constant communication and, and um, touch and reinforcement and reassurance going on. And when a, when a human tries to raise a monkey by themselves, all those things are absent. Yeah. And one of, one of the things that can occur too is that um, as this baby's starting to mature, they make instinctual noises, little coos and so on. And what happens is the human hears him coo and mimics it right back to him. Coo, coo. Makes a cute little noise. But that's the extent of the learning.
They, they have their own language. They have words, they have vocalizations that they each understand. And so when they're raised by a human, they don't get any of that training. So they're left at a very early developmental stage psychologically. And after a few years, it's gone. They're, they're just, that opportunity is gone, similar to human development. There reaches a point where you've reached your maximum potential. And so it's just a, a, a horrible idea from the very, very beginning. And the fact that people continue to try to perpetrate this and make money off of these monkeys is, is still rather sad. Um, and getting back to your point about euthanizing, I'm afraid there's going to come a day where some animals aren't going to have a sanctuary to go to because the legitimate sanctuaries, again, are filling up. Right now we have a waiting list, um, and, and it's probably going to get deeper and deeper. And, and at some point, we may not have the funds to build any new enclosures. Speaking of babies, one just walked by carrying a baby behind you. Well, uh, we won't address that situation. Here well, but it's, you know, <laughs> no, I'm teasing. You know, okay. <laughs> What, yeah. what's going, you're not breeding them here yourself. No, uh, no, so. we, we certainly don't want any breeding going on here. And that's part and parcel to a legitimate sanctuary's philosophy is that you don't want more born into captivity. That's the very last thing you want. You know, eventually what we would like to see is that the only place a monkey exists is in proper habitat for the monkey out in the wild without killing them all to do that. And that's going to require cooperation on so many levels, but hopefully we'll get there as human beings. Um, we have begun a program over the last six years to sterilize all the males, and we have a few more to go. So you're having some accidents. We, right? we are having some accidents, and uh, we're looking forward to fixing those. That, that sounds like a job, though. You've got to you've got to capture that animal, yes, and you've got to sedate it, and yes. you've got to do surgery on it, right? Yes. Or, and then, I mean, uh, just looking around at these guys, they haven't exactly come jumping up in my arms and saying, you know, no. castrate me. No. You know? And and what's happened is we've gotten a good 98% of the intact males, but they all watch each other and they get smarter and smarter and smarter. So the last few are going to be the hardest to do. Monkey see, monkey do. That's right. Well, monkey see, monkey learn very yeah. quickly, <laughs> especially when, when they're hardwired to be suspicious of things to begin with. Yeah. And um, so what we do is we uh, set up traps for them where they can go through the top of an enclosure or cage, large cage, um, and they get in but they can't get out. So that's one way. But they quickly learn not to go in there anymore. So now we're down to the few where we actually have to go out into the field and tranquilize them with an immobilization rifle and, and then try to locate them in this dense shrub. And so this time of year it's extremely dangerous. To do that. And you can tell from a distance, this one, we, we missed him, he needs to be yes. down? You can yes. tell? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, well, uh, how, how old are these, these monkeys likely to live in this environment? Well, in this environment, probably 20 to 24 years is, is about the extent of it. Um, in certain favorable environments, up to 30 years of age. So it's, it's a, it's a long-term situation, a long-term uh, support for them that's required. And that's another thing that when people start looking at these monkeys as pets, that they don't often take into consideration. Um, that, that monkey may live to be 25 to 30 years old, and some of the, parent, some of the humans may, may not live long enough to, you know to to see those uh, monkeys into a proper situation and then what happens you know you're, yeah you're, yeah and well and typically what happens is then law enforcement officials unfortunately are forced to deal with the situation and, and in fact that recently happened in Tennessee where a, a macaque got out and, and uh, bit a neighbor severely and then when the officer showed up the female officer was bit and attacked and of course then they have to kill the monkey then they confiscated four other monkeys and, and, and again these kind of situations we have enough to do out there is, is my take and our officers are out there doing a good job and they don't need to have to be involved in these kind of situations so we would really like most to see it go away and we would like to see it go away because people realize that it's just not the right thing to do.